and the function is given by m is equal to u t square plus v over t square. So m is equal to u t square plus v over t square. Now here, what else they say now? They said that where u and v are constant, given that m is minus one, so they're telling us that when m is minus one, when m is minus one, t is one. So that's an equation that they give with. Then tell us uh, when m is equal to minus one, when m is minus one, t is going to be equal to one. So that's an equation. So so so, so concept it up now. Minus one is equal to Mm, one square is one. So minus one works out to be one square is one. One times u is u. And then one square is one. So it works out to be u plus v. All right, u plus v. So minus one is u plus v. Let's check out the next equation. Now the next equation says, and the rate of change of m with respect to t is 35 over four. So now we need to find dm by dt. So dm by dt is going to be equal to, dm by dt is equal to carry down the power to get two ut, subtract so one from the power, that's give us t plus, to differentiate vt square, it is start with the bottom, which is t squared times the differential of the top, which is zero minus the top. I'm not gonna differentiate it using quotient rule. I'm just gonna rewrite m for a second. I'm gonna rewrite m as v over t squared is v times t to the minus two. To differentiate it this way, it's gonna be, this way is a lot easier to differentiate it. So it's carried on the power to get minus two v t to the negative three. That's a much easier way to differentiate it. And then I can go ahead and rewrite this now as minus, we carry on the power, subtract one from the power. Yeah. And then I'm gonna rewrite it as minus two v over t cube. This is a much easier way to differentiate it. And they tell us that dm by dt is 35 over four. And so what they're telling us then is that this implies that dm by dt, 35 over four is equal to, this occurs when t is two. So two times two is four. So that works out to be four u. That's four u, um, t is two. Um, Two cube is uh, two cube. Two times two is four. Two cube is eight. Two over eight is a quarter. This works out to be a quarter v. Now you can be bold and multiply through by four to get thirty-five is equal to four times four, which is sixteen, and this works out to be 16 u minus v, all right? Nice and easy. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put the two equations together. Let me put it in red over here. I have 35 is equal to 16 u minus v. If you want, you can go ahead and add these two equations together. You can add them. Minus one plus 35 is 34. And then um, u plus 16u is 17u. And so if I divide both sides by 17, I'm getting that u is two. u is equal to two. If u is equal to two, then I know that 
minus one is equal to two plus V. When I subtract the two from both sides, I'll get minus three. And so V is minus three. So that's the answer, U is two and V is negative three. So conclude, tell them. So U is equal to two and V is negative three. Nice and easy, soft. And this takes care of question number five. You see the paper so easy, man. Come on, man, the paper so easy and nice. Question six. Question six is differentiation. Um, let's look at differentiation. Um, let's go. It tells us that y is equal to the square root of 4x squared minus 7. If y is equal to the square root of 4x squared minus 7, show that y dy by dx is 4x. First thing I want you to do is, when you have something like this, just square both sides. When you square both sides, you're gonna get y squared is equal to 4x squared minus seven. Now I want you to differentiate both sides with respect to x. If you don't know implicit differentiation, check out the video on implicit differentiation. Check it out. So we're gonna differentiate this implicitly by bringing down the power to get two y. Then when you differentiate y, you get dy by dx. So two dy by dx is equal to when you differentiate 4x squared, you get 8x, all right? You can then go ahead and divide through by two and you're gonna get y dy by dx is equal to 8x over two, which is 4x. So the first part is shown, nice and easy, soft. First part done and dusted. Nice. So that's proven quite easily brushed aside. Now it says, hence or otherwise, show that y times d2y by dx squared plus dy by dx r squared is equal to 4. So to do that, we're going to again use implicit again. Using implicit differentiation, we keep the first, which is y, times the derivative of the second. Right, keep the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative, when you differentiate dy by dx, you get d2y by dx squared plus keep the second, which is dy by dx. times the derivative of the first, and then you differentiate y, you differentiate y, you get dy by dx. And that is equal to, when you differentiate four x, you get four. That's equal to four. All right, so this works out just to be y times d2y by dx squared y times d2y by dx squared plus d2y by dx squared, and that's equal to four. Nice and easy, soft. Yep, nice and easy, soft. So that part proven as well. Nice and easy, easily brushed aside, soft. Okay, let's look at the next part of the question. It says, the equation of the curve is, or the curve passes through the point negative one zero. So it's giving us a root of the equation and the gradient dy by dx is three x squared minus six x. All right, so dy by dx, 
dy by dx is equal to 3x squared minus 6x. Now, in order to find the equation of the curve, you integrate dy by dx. And so y is equal to the integral. This is part b, looking at the first part. So y is equal to the integral of 3x squared minus 6x. All right, dx, always put a dx. So when you integrate 3x squared minus 6x, you add one to the power. I didn't want to the power, you get 3x cubed. You divide by the power, which is 3 minus, add one to the power, so you get 6x squared. Divide by the power of 2 plus some constant k. All right, nice and easy. That's what you get for y. Nice. So when you do this now, you're going to get that y is equal to. 3x cubed over 3x cubed is x cubed. Minus 6 over 2 is 3x squared plus some constant k. Now you need to find this constant k. How are you going to find k? Remember, it tells us that our point p is on the curve. It tells us p, and p is the point, I believe that's negative 1, 0, lies on the curve. So if the point negative one zero lies on the curve, what does that mean? That means that when y is zero, x is negative one. So zero is equal to negative one cubed minus three times negative one squared plus k. Nice and easy. All right, negative one cubed is minus one, so zero is equal to minus one. No, minus three times negative one squared. That's minus three. Minus three times negative one squared is minus three. So this is minus three plus k, and so k is equal to four. So this tells us that k is equal to four. If k is equal to four, finally, we can write that the equation of the line or the equation of the curve rather is y is equal to x cubed. y is equal to x cubed minus three x squared plus four. y is equal to x cubed minus three x squared plus four. That's the equation of the curve. Nice and easy, soft. Nice and easy. The next part now, it says find the stationary points or find the stationary points on the curve or the coordinates of the stationary points. At a stationary point, dy by dx equals zero. At a stationary point dy by dx is equal to zero. So that's all we need to do. We just need to set. So that implies that we're going to set dy by dx, which is 3x squared minus 6x. We're going to set it equal to zero. Setting 3x squared minus 6x equal to 0. We can then divide through by 3 to get x squared minus, dividing through by 3, we get x squared minus 2x is equal to 0. And so solving this equation, you're going to get x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 2. But they want the stationary coordinates. This is just an ordinate. So we need to find the y value. All right, we need to find the corresponding y values. So to find the corresponding y values, we go back to the equation of the curve. So you plug in x as zero here, 
zero cube minus zero plus four is four. So when x is zero, y is four. And then plug in when x is two. When x is two here, you're gonna get two cube minus three times two square plus four. I'm getting zero. And so another point is here. So now you can conclude that the coordinates of the stationary points are, coordinates of the stationary points are 0, 4 and 2, 0. 0, 4 and 2, 0. Those are the coordinates of the stationary point, all right, on the curve. Nice and easy, soft. Okay. Next part of the question. The next part of the question, it says, determine the nature of each stationary point. To determine the nature of each stationary point, this is where the second derivative comes into play. You're gonna have to find the second derivative. So the second derivative is given by d2y by dx squared, and you're going to differentiate dy by dx to find d2y by dx squared. It's going to be equal to when you carry down the power, you get 6x. When you differentiate 6x, you get minus 6. So let's find, let's determine the nature at 0, 4. All right. So at At two at zero four, what is happening at zero four? At zero four, we see that the second derivative d two y by d x square is equal to when you plug in zero, you're gonna get six times zero is zero, so you're gonna get minus six, minus six, which is less than zero. When it is less than zero, that is a maximum point, all right? So zero two is a maximum stationary point. What else do we need now? We need to find what's happening at, at two zero. Let's find what's happening at two zero. At, at two zero, What's the second derivative at two zero? The second derivative d2y by dx square at two zero d2y by dx square is equal to six times two is 12, 12 minus six is six, six is greater than zero. All right, and so two zero is a minimum stationary point. Two zero is a Minimum, minimum stationary point. Two zero is a minimum stationary point. Nice. Now, what else do we need now? What's the next part of the question? It says, find the coordinates of the points of P and Q where the curve meets the x-axis. So pretty much they're asking us to solve for the roots. And they're giving away five marks for that. Oh, them so nice. They're nice, don't it? They're giving away five marks to find the roots. The curve meet the x-axis at the roots. So all we're gonna have to do is to solve this equation equal to zero. So we're gonna have to solve x cubed minus three x squared plus four equal to zero. That will give us the roots. Now guys, you don't even need to do this question. Let me tell you why. They told us that minus one zero lie on the curve. So if minus one zero lie on the curve, then X plus one is a factor. So we're good. So already can 
divide this by x plus one, cause we know minus one zero lie on the curve. So we can divide it by x plus one. See what them nice? Then them give we a point on the curve, which was a root, all right? So doing our polynomial division, x into x cubed is x squared. x squared times x is x cubed x squared times one is plus x squared. Then we subtract them. All right, x cubed minus x cubed that gone. Minus three x squared minus x squared is minus four x squared. Plus four. All right, and then x into minus four x squared is minus four x. Then x times minus 4x is minus 4x squared. And minus 4x times 1 is minus 4x. All right, now I'll subtract them. We're going to have minus 4x squared minus minus 4x squared, that cancel. And then we have minus minus 4x is positive 4x. We'll get left up with 4x plus four. And then x plus one into 4x plus four, that leaves plus four. Four times x plus one is 4x plus four. You see how factor and remainder theorem powerful, it's coming in in every topic, don't it? So we get 4x plus 4, then we subtract them. 4x minus 4x gone, 4 minus 4, that's 0. And so what we're actually solving then is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4. It's working out to just be x cubed minus 3x squared. Let's not write over all of that. So all of this is working out just to be x cubed minus three x squared plus four is working out to be x plus one times x squared minus four x plus four. And this is equal to zero, nice. So now when we solve this equal to zero, what we're gonna get is, well, looking at this, this is really just x plus one times, no, x squared minus four x plus four is really just x minus two all squared. And that's equal to zero. So what does that mean? So that means that the two roots are going to be x is equal to minus 1 or x equal to. So now we can go ahead and write down the coordinates of P and Q. So the coordinates of P is minus 1, 0. And Q is the point 2, 0. Nice and easy. Those are the roots. These are these are the x axis intercepts. Part V now, part V wants us to sketch the curve. So let's do part V over here. So sketch the curve. So I like to sketch the curve and then label everything else. So I just sketch a cubic curve and it told me that the maximum point was zero four. Maximum point was zero four. So I'm gonna label this point as zero four. The 
These are the stationary points. I'm labeling the stationary points in red at 0, 4. Zero four, and the minimum point. I think this was two zero, two zero. Nice. Now let's put in the axis. I'm going to use true blue for the axis. So axis. When x is zero, y is four. So this is the y axis. So the function turns on the y axis. Luckily. This is the y-axis, the x-axis is here. The function also turns on the x-axis. Right, so let me label it now. Your y-axis, your x-axis. Now I'm going to label the points P and Q to zero. This is your point Q. That's your point Q. And then of course, the next root was a point negative one, zero. Negative one, zero, and that was your point P. So this is the cubic equation. This gives you a full seven marks. Giving away marks. Well, not seven, four. Two marks for the stationary points, two marks for the roots. Nice and easy, soft. And this takes care of 2012 paper tool. That's all easy pure maths is. Just subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up and we're going to be going 